All right, so let me just go ahead and finish this example out and uh, go ahead and reversing through, through empty space, trying to find an absorptive particle that this photon can use to, um, to terminate this photon, this photon's life. All right, so uh, we covered the, all these ticks. And what happened was when it hit these particles, it, it created these uh, additional records in the photon queue. Now let's go to the next um, next state where the fo photon is ex expanding out even more, right? One more unit out. And another thing you'll notice, it's pretty obvious, but each uh, tick of time that the photon expands out, it's covering a, a, an increasing increasingly large number of potential um, photon um, absorptive targets. And that just makes sense, right? But the expansion rate is, uh, is, is fixed according to a very, very simple formula uh, in which you can calculate the number of cubes in the outer shell of a cubic object. Now I'm showing this two-dimensional here. Yeah, obviously, you know it would be three-dimensional. So if you take a three-dimensional cube and you count the number of cubes in the outer layer of it, that's one, that's one energy level if you want to look at it uh, according to physics. Each energy level would cor correlate to a different temperature, right? All right. Well, I mean, it would correlate to a different temperature level of, of absorption because each, each of these levels is one more Planck distance unit away from the emitting particle. And, you know, according to the the rule of uh, photon absorption, you take that distance and you square it, and you, you, divide, it, you divide it into the original intensity that the uh, photon was, um, was created with, okay? And so you do, you track all the information informationally here, right? See, I got the intensity track right here, okay? Now what happens is it gets a little more complicated because now uh, what's showing here, like this W17, water molecule number 17, it has just released its own photon, and it's now that photon is covering these uh, these uh, potential absorptive targets here. Uh, it's hard for me to do this, but this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, okay? Those are all being touched by this new expansion of this photon here, okay? Now we can talk about stuff like directionality, right? The directionality that was established from the original photon from here to here, it's going off in this direction. And now these new uh, intermediate photons are going off in other directions, right? Is the, is the universe going to allow this? Is the universe going to allow like a photon to, to go forward and then come completely go, go backward? I don't think so, okay? I think the universe in this case, it would, it would establish some level of directionality and it wouldn't allow pathways to go forward and then completely backward, okay? And it might, that might explain how lasers work, you know, how they are able to go in like in one direction or like a spotlight or something that like goes in one direction because once it's established, uh, a pathway a directionality is established and everything that happens after that would be based upon that directionality. I hope you're following what I'm saying here. Anyway, let's just keep going through this. What happened was... Um, this Q keeps keeps getting built up. It, it, it added these three, these four new records now because these are ones that got um, got hit again. Like this one got hit, this one got hit, this one got hit, and this one got hit. Right? But uh, what's going to happen now? These intermediate photons they're going to start overlapping uh, collisions with stuff that's already going out, and you'll see what's going to happen in that case. We're going to wind up with duplicate records in this uh, in this queue here. Now watch what happens here. I know it's, I've got a lot more detail in what I'm explaining here, but okay, keep okay, this. It went out one more tick of time, one more um, outer shell distance here, right? But now what you're going to see there's going to be some uh, duplication of, of the. Um, of the re recordings here, duplications of the photons where the same photon is in the same place at the same um, moment in time. Moment the traversal, the moment of traversal. I'm saying. 
Now, I don't want to bore you with too many details here, but this queue is being built up here. I'm, I tried to color code the ones that are uh, um, um, absorb absorptions that are happening for transparent molecules that happen from the original um, emission versus the ones that are happening from um, intermediate emissions that occurred from uh, um, intermediate photons that got re-emitted re through from these transparent <coughs> molecules. So the ones in purple are the ones from the original, and the ones in blue are the ones that are from um, that got re-emitted from um, transparent molecules. Okay, and like I said, some of these are duplicates. But I don't want to bore you guys with too much detail. I just want you to look look at this queue as it gets built up, and it keeps expanding off, and it keeps creating these more and more of these intermediate uh, records and more and more. And I want you to notice something here. Do you guys notice something happening in these in the pattern here? You guys notice it? Can you see it? It looks like an interference pattern, doesn't it? It, it is. It, that's exactly what it is. It, it really is an interference pattern. Because what these are are the relative probabilities of these various nodes completing the traversals. I'm, I know I'm not explaining it right. <laughs> But these stripes are resulting from the relative probabilities of, 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 of the eventual uh, traversal happening. And it's sort of like, it, obviously it resembles an interference pattern because that's what it is. But it's not occurring for the reason that they, that, they, that they say that the waves are interfering with the other waves. It's happening because of the relative probabilities um, of these traversals completing when you take into account the overlaps that occur when multiple uh, when multiple photons can can be issued from the same location, so what, I think what the universe would actually do when it actually runs, first of all, I think it would um, if there was anything that that went in like a reverse direction, I think it would it would uh, delete those from the queue right away. And the other thing I think it would, it would do is when these duplicates occur, I think it would go ahead and uh, remove the duplicates from the queue as well. But uh, without doing that, I mean, you can see that these look like uh, an interference pattern. And I'm saying that that's what happens, okay? Now, um, that, that's it for, for this thing. Uh, 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 what, what I described now is uh, the, the process of the, the absorption taking place. What happens to the, the record here, um, the, uh, the eyeball, the molecule, it, it would get its heat, it would get its heat incre increased. And um, oh, before, I'm sorry, before that happens, it's got to go through this whole queue and it's got to figure out which pathway is the best way to take. And that could take quite a amount of processing time to go through this linked list table here and figure out the, the fastest pathway, but I believe that's what the universe actually does. That's where the term infinite recursion comes from. I've, I'm showing it as, a, as an informational process. Feynman describes it as a mathematical process. But by going through this, this, uh, this queue, it's actually, it's a, it's a past history, really, of all the possible traversal pathways, and the universe can then pick the one that's the best the optimal one to get from the from the emission, the absorption, and it would probably wind up going something like this to here, to here, to here, to here, and then to the eyeball.